Welcome to another presentation on the ancient civilizations and welcome to the great photographers who's doing this for us. Who's this man? In our previous lecture we studied about Ashur Manipal, the last great Assyrian ruler. We also learned about Ashur Nasarpal the second. He mentions in his annals how he punishes people. It's terrible. Heaps of corpses were heaped up, walked over them. And then we met the famous Shalmaneser III and uh, we looked at the Kurk Stela where the name of Ahab is mentioned. Uh, a battle that took place at Karkar in 853 and where archaeologists found that the phrase Ahabu Matsar Ilu in uh, on the document where it says Israel's king Ayab ruled here. And of course he had a tremendous uh, input in the coalition. He had more weapons and soldiers than any other individual nation. The cuneiform stealer cries out, the Bible is true, there was an Ayab. There was a Jezebel and there was a Elijah. Jehu was humiliated, put in bondage and had to pay taxes to Shalmaneser III because of his disobedience. And then I was more excited when I read the name of Adatni Rari III because he was the king who lived during the time of Jeroboam and Jonah. The Bible says this king was converted. Can archaeology confirm it? Yes, he became a monotheist. When I look at this Assyrian war relief, I thought of the kind and loving God we serve. How did he respond to their behavioral change? He took away the destruction of Nineveh. And he will also respond when modern sinners change their ways. Here we discover God's fairness. If we break with sin, he cancels the punishment. So if you're on the wrong road and you want your punishment to be removed, come to repentance and Christ will take your punishment upon himself. I discovered this interesting statue of an Assyrian king in the Louvre Museum at Paris. Who is this man? I looked at the French inscription at the bottom and I read the name Tichlat Pileser III. Centuries before archaeologists deciphered his name, the Bible mentioned it. And people were not sure, is this factual? Now we rejoice. It's on the stones. Can you trust this inspired book? You can. And when you read it, read it prayerfully. Let the Bible read you. Because the Bible exposes our weaknesses and tells us about a solution. 1 Chronicles 5.26 says, So the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul, and this is very interesting, king of Assyria, that is, Tichlat Pileser, king of Assyria who took the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh into exile. So the exile began in the time of this king. He took them to Hala, Habor, Hara, and the river of Gozan, where they are to this day. Can we locate these sites? Because this is where the ten tribes disappeared. They're gone. Tel Halaf's alternative name is Guzana Khosan. Archaeologists researched some of these places and found very interesting inf info. Uh, at Aleppo I visited this archaeological museum and in front of the museum we've got this display that comes from uh, Tel Hala, Halaf, the biblical Gozan. Bible mentions the name. Here we've got the evidence. First Chronicles 5.26, he took them to Hala, northeast of Nineveh, 
river of Mesopotamia. What a bad, sad story. It could have been so much better for them had they obeyed God. But they became part of the soil they dust. They disappeared from the history. If you are in exile, a far off land of rejection and guilt, remember God knows about you. He wants to bring you back to a state of mind where you will enjoy peace. Look at this. They found proof of Israelite exiles who lived here. Of course, they disappeared. Small details like these assure me of a caring God. He mentions the smallest details. Tel Hazor, uh, this is currently the greatest archaeological site in Israel, and many people come here for excavations. And I'm so proud of students who devote their time and their energy to excavate these biblical sites. Professor Michael Hazel from Southern University in America brought his students to excavate the truths of long ago. And it's so nice to speak to these students and to these scholars who can teach us more. The Bible mentions the cruel practice of parents sacrificing their children. And here we find one of those cruel altars where it happened. The Bible also mentions something interesting about Tichlat Pileser and this very site Chasor. It says in 2 Kings 15.29 In the days of Tika, king of Israel, Tichlat Pileser, king of Assyria, came and took Ion, Abel Beth, Maka, Janoah, Kedesh, and then Chasor, Gilead and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali, and he carried them captive to Assyria. You know, in spite of all these exiles that took place in the wars, the ten tribes did not repent. They just carried on. That's sad. God pleads long with us. This is what the Bible predicted, that it would happen. Did it come true? We want to know if destruction could be confirmed by archaeology. The Bible says Tichlat Pileser destroyed the city. Now let's ask the archaeologist if this happened. Do you think this lady, this is an archaeologist, could be of assistance? I asked her and she helped me. Can you see the black line? This is destruction. Could this be the work of Tichlat Pileser as recorded in the Bible? My enthusiasm knew no bounds when I found this destruction level. This is exciting. I consulted with my daughter Loretta and she confirmed the authenticity of the biblical fact. And this is what she said, Dad, this is for sure the evidence of the 732 BC destruction of Hasor by the mighty Assyrian king Tichlat Pileser III. By the way, the Bible also called him Pul. That was his royal name because he was also a king in Babylon, his Babylonian royal name. So what the Bible says can be confirmed by archaeology. What caused this terrible destruction? Israel's attempted rebellion against Assyrian domination resulted in an evasion by the forces of the Assyrian ruler Tichlat Pileser III. What a rebellious nature. You know, I think God chose the weakest of the weak, the greatest rebels, to show how he cares for people. And if you are a bad person, God loves to help bad people. What do these excavations tell us? The evidence on the ground suggests that hasty attempts were made to reinforce the defenses of Hasor. Were they successful? No. Despite these defenses, Hasor was captured in, as I mentioned before, 732 BC, its population deported, 
and the city was burned to the ground. And now we come and we resurrect the history and it confirms what the Bible says. Archaeology says the Bible is true, it's reliable. It's God's word, it's inspired. If you read it, you're in good company and your life will change. Looking at the statue of Tichlat Pileser, I thought of the meaning of his name. And this is very interesting. One university asked me to do a PhD on the etymology of these ancient names. It's fascinating. For instance, Tukulti, Apil Eshara, meaning my trust is in the sun, Eshara, that is the god Nenup. His trust is in Nenup, a god of imagination. Do you have an imaginary god? There's only one god. All that's left of the Syrian gods are broken statues and pottery. They put their trust in a wrong place. The gods in whom they trusted disappointed them. There's only one god that will not disappoint you. The god who spoke the universe into existence invites you and me to put our trust in him. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. I know we've got worries. Put your trust in him. Cuneiform writings from Assyria tell us, do you know a king called Tiglat Pileser III, which is mentioned in scripture? I spoke to this cuneiform and he said, yes. Yes, comes the reply, especially when it comes to the ten tribes of Israel. Second Kings 15.10 Then Pul, remember, this is his Babylonian royal name. <clears throat> his Assyrian royal name is Tiglat Pileser. Invaded the land and Menahem gave him a thousand talents of silver to gain his support and strengthen his own hold on the kingdom. Can we get the Syrian confirmation for this biblical statement? Yes. The tribute is mentioned in the display description that was found in his palace at Nimrut. This comes from the volume Ancient Near Eastern Text, page 283. A tremendous volume if you want to be more enlightened concerning the translations of these inscriptions. They also discovered the name of King Azariah of Judah, who paid tribute to him. There it is. The Bible is true. It's so reliable. It's so wonderful to read the Bible. Check these names, places, and there you find them. Menahem inscription says, As for Menahem, terror overwhelmed him like a bird. Alone he fled and submitted to me. To his place I brought him back, and silver, coloured woolen garments, linen garments, I received as his tribute. Here, an Assyrian king tells what the Bible mentions, how this Menahem king of the ten tribes brought tribute to him. This is great stuff. Can you still remember Tiglat Pileser's Assyrian name? Tukulti Apil Esahara. My trust is in the god Nineb, one of the restored gates of Nineveh, who destroyed the city and when? Three kings. Seacheres, Nabupulasar and his son, Nebuchadnezzar, in 612. Were the gods able to protect them? No. Only God can give protection if it's his will. For many centuries the Assyrians placed their trust in the gods of their own imaginations. Their huge bulls with human heads were symbols 
of an undefeatable and indestructible civilization. They became, they became cruel. On the one hand, these huge Assyrian winged bulls speak of a defeated empire. On the other hand, they call us to place our trust in a God who never fails people who come to him for help. Archaeology is an exciting science. You find biblical confirmation. Now, visiting these dangerous places takes a lot of inspiration and when the Celsius goes up to 50 degrees and plus you perspire but you bring back your material and that's great when you come across the evidences that confirm the truth of the word of God you forget about your perspiration and you find a tremendous reward the Bible takes on a new meaning a personal meaning when you read it prayerfully and these ancient names become personal friends when you study ancient civilizations in the light of the Bible you get a whole new perspective on life you understand the coming and going of civilizations and you can see a pattern he was the first king to introduce wholesale transplantations of subjugated nations to other countries. Here we have the first appearance of this type of phenomenon. Why? Well, he wanted to uproot them, kill their nationalistic spirit and sentiments and destroy old loyalties. Take them away from their roots, put them over there. And this is where the Samaritans come from. In doing so, he facilitated his reign over the conquered people. He also ruled over Babylon and accepted the Babylonian name of Pul, as I mentioned. These small details help us to understand why the Bible calls him also Pul. Well, excuse my dirty pants, it's sometimes difficult to get down into these tombs. This is a place at Nimrud. And guess where this is? This is a great discovery. I was so excited. This is the tomb of Yaba, queen of Tiglat Pileser III at Nimrud. I was there. I spoke to the archaeologist. The man in the middle is a medical doctor who came with me. And he tells me the story. While he was excavating there, he came to this specific tomb. And when he opened it, it was full of treasures. It's been transported to the museum in Baghdad. And he told us that uh, Saddam Hussein gave him a 4x4. Four four. And we looked at the 4x4, four four, which was a reward for what he was doing. By the way, I once saw the 24 Mercedes is when Saddam Hussein passed us on the road. And the driver and the five people sitting with us got so excited. He was loved by some of his, uh, some of his people. These are some of the treasures that this man got right here in this tomb. Shalmaneser 5 and the last king of Israel. Rooms of the Temple of Ashur. Before the Assyrians began a military campaign, as I mentioned in previous lecture, they first consulted this cruel god of war, Ashur. Ashur. And I visited the temple here where they prayed, Shall we go and destroy Khazor? Yes, go. Or shall we destroy Babylon it was destroyed by the Syrians. Shall we go up to Jerusalem and destroy it? This is interesting. On one such occasion, they asked Ashur whether they should go up to Israel and destroy the capital of Samaria. The answer was positive because the devil knew Israel had severed their relationship with Yahweh their God. 
and they went. And this was the end of the ten tribes. Let us ask the Bible to tell us more about this Assyrian king. In 2 Kings 17.3 we read, Shalmaneser, according to archaeology, he was number five, king of Assyria came up to attack Hoshea, who had been Shalmaneser's vassal and had paid tribute to him. This is an Assyrian war relief. When you study the Assyrian military successes of those days, you really feel sorry for their victims. These were mighty men with mighty weapons and they destroy wherever they went. Read for instance Isaiah 37 and 38. The mighty Assyrian army was approaching the ten tribes with a vengeance. And here you can see how they fought. And because they have neglected their relationship with God, poor Israel had no protection against the enemy. God gave them many, many years to repent. But their resistance became stronger and stronger. Ruins of ancient Samaria and Israel at wall dating from the time of Ahab. 2 Kings 17.5 The king of Assyria invaded the entire land, marched against Samaria, and laid siege to it for three years. Three years. Can you imagine the famine in that city? The rebelliousness of the people? God gave them three years to repent. How long has God given you, my friend, time to repent? of certain things in your life. Let's not disappoint him. This is the hill of Samaria. Can you see in your mind's eye? Shalmaneser the fifth surrounding this hill with his mighty Assyrian soldiers. Can you imagine the plight of the starving Israelites inside the city? You can read it in Kings. It's sad. Starving mothers ate their newborn babies. The Lord said, this would happen to you should you become a disobedient. What a price to pay for willful stubbornness. Rebellion started in heaven and the, the devil wants us to be rebellious. Ask God to take away your rebellion. A rebellious nature destroys a person. Look at this. Look at this. This is very cruel. Verse 6. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and Israel away to Assyria and placed them in Hala and by the river Habor, the river Chosan, and in the cities of the Medes. So they were not all taken to Assyria. They were also taken to the cities of the Medes, that's Susan and other cities. How sad, the end of a long journey of rebellion, and they disappeared. I've been to Samaria just a few weeks ago, and the history just came back to me, and I felt so sorry, and I asked God, please help me, never to resist your spirit, when he speaks to my heart. Look at this. They are flaying people, cutting off their skins. Cruelty. God didn't want Israel to suffer this. But they had a choice. God never interferes without decisions and choices. But he tells us about the consequences should we decide the wrong way. Why did God allow this? First, Second Kings 17 verse 7 says, For it was so, for, for so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them out up of the land of Egypt from under the hand of the Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and they had feared other gods. God brought them out. 
He cared for them in the desert. He cared for him. He cared for them ever since. And then they said, No, thank you, God. We will worship other gods. That was their choice. And it walked in the statues of the nations whom the Lord had cast out bef from before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel which they had made. <laughs> they got worse than the heathen nations. By the way, they excavated more figurines polytheistic figurines in Jerusalem than in any other city. It became the most wicked city. It's so sad. All verse 9, all the children of Israel secretly did against the Lord their God things that were not right. Am I doing things that are right or do I things that are wrong? And they built for themselves high places in all their cities. All their cities. From watchtower to fortified city, places for pagan worship. You know, when you study the history, you're amazed at the fact that God suffered them so long. Now, we would have destroyed them long ago. Of course, they sacrificed their children. And then, listen to verse 10 and 11. They set up for themselves sacred pillars, and uh, you can read the details of what this means. And wooden images on every high hill and under every green tree. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Praise David. From where shall my help come from? The hills. They practiced male and female prostitution. And he said, Lord, please, where shall my help come from? My help is from God. There they burnt incense on all the high places, like the nations whom the Lord had carried away before them. And they did wicked things to provoke the Lord of anger. Now listen to this. Verse 17 and 18. And they caused their sons and daughters to pass through the fire. They burnt their little children. Can you believe it? Witchcraft and soothsaying and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them from his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah alone. May God help you and me not to become like Israel, but allow the Holy Spirit to convince and convict us of sin in our lives. Sin is too expensive to harbor in our system. Shalmaneza 5, do you realize that the Bible mentions your name? History tells us that Shalmaneza 5 died during the last year of the siege. Who was his successor? I feel sorry for these escapees swimming to safety. Look at this. Can you see the fish here? Swimming to safety. Once captured by the Syrians, they will be exiled to a strange land of hardships. What do you see on this relief? More people swimming to safety, trying to escape. When the Syrian arrows hit their inflated skins, they will drown. What are their chances of survival? It's very slim. Are you in a similar predicament right now, trying to escape to safety? Victorious Assyrians pursuing the enemies. Is the enemy of divorce in your family, pain, guilt, pursuing you? Are you fleeing, trying to flee away from 
a marital, marital situation. Pain, guilt. We call it escapism. What do you see? Israelite exiles going to a strange land where they will die. Are you being led into exile to a foreign land of loneliness, tears and rejection like the people you see in this picture? Maybe you have lost your health and are being exiled to the foreign land of the invalids. Maybe you are sitting on a wheelchair. Maybe emphysema, maybe cancer, whatever. Is there hope for people who lost everything like this person during the war? Lost everything. Is there hope for this world of tears, tragedy, pain and death? My fellow hurting friend, I have extremely exciting good news for you. This is not the final. Jesus, the sinner's friend who died for our sins, is coming soon to rescue us from this land of bondage. And it says in Revelation 21 verse 4, You are hurting, but it says, And God will wipe away every tear. There are different tears for different hurts. He is going to wipe them away with his great handkerchief of comfort. There shall be no more death. Death of lovely friendships, death of loved ones. No sorrow. No crying. There shall be no more pain. Maybe you live from pain tablets. Chronic pain. Physical and mental. No more pain. <laughs> Can you imagine a land without pain? For the former things have passed away. This is what God offers. How many words will be absent from the heavenly dictionary? Tears will be gone, sorrow will be gone, pain will be gone, death will be gone. New grammar, eternal security, eternal health, eternal happiness. You know, our happiness span in this life is so short. You just enjoy happiness and then a crisis comes and it's gone. Eternal bliss. Can you imagine a place like this? What must we do to be there? Let us confess our weaknesses. It's all we can do. And accept God's gift of forgiveness and everlasting life. Are you willing to do it? You come with your helplessness. helplessness. To his help. You come with your weaknesses to his strength. You come with your impurity to his forgiveness. All that the sinner can do is to come to God because salvation comes from the outside. We will continue researching ancient Assyria. And may God bless you as you read your Bible concerning these interesting kings. Let's pray. Father in heaven, prevent an exile into misery and help us to be obedient to you. Thank you for giving us a code of conduct. A code of conduct which, when we obey it, brings happiness and security. Where we failed you, please forgive us. Write our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we and may we be part of that happy company. 
one of these days when Jesus comes, we pray this in his name. Amen. Thank you.